So if you're instructing kids from the sideline in any kind of way, you are potentially putting your kids in a situation that they cannot learn. They become learning disabled. They will not take in the information. They'll actually reject the information, and they, they, they can't function. They will, they will fail immediately in the game of soccer or any subject it may be if the influencer, the coach, the teacher, the professor, the parent, if you're trying to influence it or give comments of any kind, feedback of what you do, you're destroying these kids, and I'm going to prove it via video. So there's a, a video that was produced a long time ago, and apparently not enough people have seen it. You probably haven't seen it. It was on PBS a long time ago, and I'm going to show you it. But before we show you that, I'm going to uh, show you the man that uh, created it. So this is uh, Dr. Richard Lavoy. Uh, if you're in, in if you're in education, if you're a teacher, you're probably very familiar with this man. Rick Lavoy has served as an administrator of residential programs for children with special needs since 1972. He holds three degrees in special education and has served as an adjunct professor or visiting lecturer at numerous universities, including Syracuse, Harvard, Gondolette, Man uh, Manhattanville College, University of Alabama, and Georgetown. His numerous national television appearances include... CBS Morning Show, Good Morning America, ABC Evening News, and Disney Channel Presents. Rick serves as a consultant on learning dis disabilities to several agencies and organizations, including Public Broadcasting Services, New York Times, National Center for Learning Disabilities, uh, Girl Scouts of America, Child Magazine, and um, uh, WIDA. He is, a, he is a member of the professor, uh, Professional Advisory Board of the Learning Disability Association. Now, uh, his... Uh, his his background is amazing, but what's more amazing, he actually does a video production, which we're about to show you, how he actually takes, he'll have, he'll have an officer, he'll have a lawyer, he'll have teachers, he'll have normal professionals of every industry in there, and he puts them through a uh, series of questions, and the way he uses the tone of his voice and how, um, how, he, how quick he talks puts them all in the same situation of a learning disabled child. So he uh, did this to get everyone to feel what, what is it like to be learning disabled? So for you parents and coaches that feel like you got to make jokes and you got to be loud and you have to make comments every time uh, the child uh, does something or at any age, college, it don't matter. You know, this is for everybody. If you are interjecting, the, the people hearing it are processing it, and then things can happen. Very few people can handle this kind of, kind of pressure. And it's not a good thing, especially for children. You're not allowing development to happen. So no further ado, let's watch the video real quick, and then we're going to talk about it. Child ...and see firsthand the frustration, anxiety, and tension that those children experience in school every day. The rules are very simple. First of all, this is not a role-playing activity. It's what's called simulation. Now, if you don't want to participate in this, if you would prefer to sit this out and you don't want to be called on, if you don't like being embarrassed in front of people and being asked to do things you can't do and being made to feel really uncomfortable, okay? That's tough. Because one of the things that you've got to gain as a parent or a teacher dealing with learning disabled people is this, the idea of problem ownership. You see, the learning disabled child isn't learning disabled just so he can mess up your English class eight period every day. He's not learning disabled just to complicate your lifestyle at home. He has no choice. So we want everyone to participate. The first rule, the second rule is please no role playing. We don't want you to try to act like kids. The material will make it difficult for you to function. There is no need for you to try to make it worse than it really is. And that's an important thing he says right there. It's, like, it, it's, the, it's the information he's about to give is going to be that difficult for these professionals. Of all industries, there's an officer there, there's a lawyer in there, there's many teachers. They cover all spectrums of the professional fields that they do well where they reside. This is what we do in soccer. We present a lot of information. Okay? <laughs> and I am going to have the bias that many mainstream teachers have, which is that LD means lazy and dumb. And if you just push the kids and motivate them enough, they can learn. It's that they choose not to. Um, again, please just follow along with me. Don't take anything personally. We'll have a good time doing this thing. Nobody's going to get hurt, but uh, you will get a chance to see what it's like to be a learning disabled child. And they do. 
They, they, you can tell on their faces that they're all messed up. They're embarrassed. What color is the booklet, Carol? Blue. What's it say in the front of the booklet, uh, Kit? Outfit City. What's it stand for, Carolyn? What does it stand for, Carolyn? I don't know. What is it? It says at the bottom of the book. What's it stand for, Maria? Frustration, anxiety, and tension. Frustration, anxiety, and tension. Uh, what kind of animals? Top of the page, Carol. Uh, bird. Turn to the next page. What color is the first page, Jane? Blue. Uh, what does it say in the first page, Carol? The first page, Carol. Earth to Carol, come in, please. The first page. Earth to Carol, come in, please. Raise your hand if you thought that was funny. Yeah, everybody likes that except who? Except Carol. Anytime you as a teacher or a parent decide to use sarcasm with kids, understand that you created a victim. Now that little throwaway line that I threw at Carol, I will forget within five minutes. You will forget within five minutes. And that is a fact. I've done that all the time. Like... I have offended so many people in my life that I do not remember, but they let me know later in life, I guess. And all the times I wake up in the middle of the night or just something some haunts, me, uh, haunts me from my past, it's from situations like this where I was embarrassed. And I'll remember it forever. We all do. And so we, as coaches and parents, we repeat it and we keep doing it, it makes no sense. But it's very likely to stay with Carol for the rest of the day. Those little throwaway sarcasms we use. Jody, what color is the print in the first page? Black. What does it say, Lee? Activity one. Is that what it says, Stephanie? Yes. Turn to the next page. What color is the next page, Lee? Yellow. Uh, what kind of animal is top of that page, Jody? Uh, tiger. A tiger. That's not a tiger, Carol. What kind of animal is top of that page? <laughs> it's a cat. It's a cat. Uh, famous story with a cat, then, Maria. Famous story with a cat, Famous story with a cat, Maria. Famous story with a cat, Give me one famous story with a cat, Maria. Okay, does anxiety affect performance? Does anxiety affect performance? Of course it does. According to this, Maria doesn't know one story with a cat in it. <laughs> give Maria a call tomorrow, she'll give you 30 of them. But in this situation, with the anxiety we've created already, with the anxiety that we've created in a short period of time, Maria's unable to get that information out. Favorite story with a cat in it, Carolyn? That, that, that's an important uh, area to stop. As a coach, you demand... You want perfection right away, and you want things handled, and you want to give information because you want to feel like you're, you're a super coach or whatever, and you're doing all these plays. And you have to let them process. They have to experience. They have to fail. I've learned this my own way. I teach, I teach the double dummy. Everyone knows I'm going to do it, and, and a lot of people have copied uh, it throughout Arizona. And I'm glad. You know, they learn it from me, and they, they pass it on. And when they success, they, they send me a message, hey, we did it, you know, kind of thing. But there's a process of learning that. You have to let them do the play, fail, process, and then go through it. And then maybe by the fifth, sixth, seventh game, they got it. You know, it, it just it, it, there's a different kind of pressure in a game environment. There's so many things they're processing. And this video changed my life as, as a coach. And this is why I want to get in the coaching field. And this is why I do the things that I do. And I'm not perfect. I, I fail all the time. But I'm able to go back and re think things. I can apologize. I can, I can course correct. This is information you don't get with U.S. soccer. You don't get it. They'll just say, don't do it. They, they, don't, they don't teach why. And this is why the education, um, there, there's a different way to get education versus some $10,000 B course. Totally is. All right, let's continue. Three little kittens. Famous story of the cat in the Debbie. Garfield. Famous story of the cat in the car. Incredible journey. Famous story of the cat in Kelly. Melissa. Karen. Uh, Kim. Merritt. Okay, let's take a look at what's happened now. I accepted the answer I don't know from Kelly. What were the next four answers that I got in a row? I don't know. See, we have to really put this under a microscope and look at this. You people have been learning disabled now for six minutes. And many of you have quit. Not six years, not 16 years, the way the LD child lives, but six minutes. And many of you, once I began accepting the answer, I don't know, how many of you decided if he calls on me, I'm going to say, I don't know. Raise your hands. <laughs> now, many of you have decided if he's going to accept, I don't know, as an answer, I'm going to stop trying to think of a response, and I'll just say, I don't know. Okay, Jody, what kind of animal is that? Top of the page again? Cat. Down below, what kind of animal is that, Lee? Duck. Stephanie, what kind of noise did a duck make? Quack. Famous story of the duck and a Nancy. Famous story of the duck and a Karen. You were ready for me, weren't you, Nancy? Famous story of the duck and a Karen. Famous story of the duck and a, come on. 
Famous story with a duck in it. One famous story with a duck in it, Karen. I can't think famous of a story. story with a duck in it. It doesn't um, take a lot of thought, Karen. Famous story with a duck in it. Um, one famous story with a duck in it. Nancy knew one. Yeah, well, Nancy's better than I am. <laughs> I can't think of Debbie, a story. Debbie, famous story with a duck in it. Duck. Famous story with a duck in it. Famous story with a duck in it, Car. Make way for duck. Famous story with a duck in it, Kelly. I was going to say Donald Duck. Oh, she took my answer, don't you like <laughs> Melissa, famous story with a duck in it. My little Turn the page, Karen. What kind of animal is that? Top of the page. I'm sorry? A pig. What kind of noise did a pig make, Kim? Famous story with a pig in it, Merritt. Famous story with a pig in it, Merritt. Famous story with a pig in it, Paula. Down below, what kind of animal is that, Car? Swan. Uh, what kind of noise did it make, Debbie? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, see, what you've got to see sometime is you've got to see Fat City from where I'm standing. Because I've got 15 people looking up at me, and I say, what kind of noise does a swan make? And everybody takes a sudden interest in their shoes. They look kind of... Oh, good. They're both on there. In other words, what happens is, after, after nine minutes of a learning disability, you people have already bought into one of the, the credos that controls the life of the LD child, which is this. If I can't see the teacher, the teacher can't see me. Important thing to pay attention to. If, if you on the sideline, a spectator, another parent, and you see a poor child getting destroyed on the sideline, and now they're always looking down, they're trying to avoid ever looking at the sideline or whatever it may be, it's a problem. There's something major that it's It's so incredible. I see it all the time. All the time. I, every weekend I see it. And these parents keep going back to the same situation. And when we finish the video, I'm not showing you the whole thing, but uh, go to the link and watch it. It's, it's just, how difficult can this be? It's the Fat City Workshop. Frustration, anxiety, and tension. And that's what we do. We create fat problems on the soccer field. Everywhere, but soccer all the time. It, it's, it's so sad to see so many people. And you wonder why so many kids quit soccer. By the time you get high school, because they're re removing themselves from that environment into another one. Not saying it won't come back to them, but they want to get out to something different. Of course they do. Of course they do. They should show this video to everybody, uh, all the parents and coaches every year until I'm mean, versus their other. And so what you do is you look away because we all know, we all know that it is the human reaction to anxiety. The first human reaction to anxiety is to look away from the source of the anxiety. And yet, what's the first thing we say to kids when we yell at them? You look at me while I'm yelling at you. You look at me while I'm spoiling your life. There are so many things we do as parents and teachers that don't make any sense. How many people here insist that kids look at them when we yell at them? I do all the time, and it makes absolutely no sense, and it's contrary to everything we know about the human reaction to anxiety. Okay? Turn the page, stop the page, camera, what kind of animal is that? Oh, a horse. What kind of noise did it make, Debbie? Nay. Famous story with a horse in a car. Black sign. Famous story with a horse in it, Kelly. Black beauty. Melissa, famous they story with a horse in it. They did both. They took both my answers. Karen, famous story with a horse in it. Kim, famous story with a horse in it. Come on. Famous story with a horse in it. There. Black Beauty. What kind of animals down below? Bottom of the page, Kelly. A camel. Okay. Just keep the books right where they are. Let's talk for a second. What about the pace of the class? <laughs> Too what? Too what? Too fast. Okay. Now, this is important to understand as a mainstream teacher, particularly. Learning disabled kids have a difficult time processing the language. As a result of that, if I ask a group, a mainstream classroom, fourth grade class with some learning disabled children and some non-disabled children, and I say, would you please tell me who, the who was the first president of the United States? The non-LD children are processing an answer. The learning disabled children have to process what? The question. So in effect, they have twice. Yeah, they have twice the processing load. So I'm going to stop it there. It's worth watching. If you have any love for your child or your your players you watch the whole thing he has a ton of examples he puts this uh environment that majority of them become learning they become learning disabled and they can't function they can't think so we talk fast i mean does it make sense that we bring a bunch of coaches with accents 
hardcore accents into our country to teach our our kids how to play soccer? No, not if we have to process their dang language. It, it's um, it, we have ma- many problems, the, and the one thing we do as coaches is we talk fast to sound like we know what we're talking about. Versus instead of trying to sound intelligent and speak very fast to, to show how how big time we are because we can process information. Um, how about we slow down and manage it? You got to manage the player's development. Coaches can do this. Parents can do it. You can manage it. How am I managing uh, my son? I'm managing managing him through stats. Speaking of which, I got to show you his updated stats. So here's here's Jack's stats. I updated it highlighted in yellow for the ones watching me on YouTube. It's it's where he is. Um, those are his top uh, performances. Whether it's, you know, his passing forward, backwards, e- even I'll even put if he uh, if he's failing, you know, this is his worth failure. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that too. He needs to look at this. Is how I can manage my son, and I keep adding to it. Um, and I can reward. I can reward in different ways, and I can really analyze and I can have a conversation with my son and tell my son, I'm like, Hey, 75% of the time, uh, or your, your playing time right now is 75% of the time. It used to be 50 and now it's 75% of the time he's playing. And the last three games he's played the entire game because where he's at, at Tuzo's, they don't mess around. They, they want to win. And you know, that's another, another discussion, but they want to compete, but they reward you for playing. Well, you, you get a play. And if you're not playing well, they'll pull you out, regardless of who you are. And I like that about that program, especially for my son, where he's at in his development. It's a good situation. So it, this is how you can manage your child. And I keep adding to it. There's so many different things that I add to it. So I have it where um, I, I'm adding loss of dribbling. I, I broke it down first and second half so I can see if he's he's doing – uh, if his fitness is a problem, because if his fitness is high, he'll actually uh, receive the ball, get a lot of touches on the ball. There just there's so many ways to manage your player, your son, your daughter. You, you have real opportunities. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I think it's beneficial. Go to the link. Watch the entirety of that YouTube uh, video with uh, Dr. Lavoie. If you're willing to do that, then it shows you care about Increasing your knowledge as a coach, it care it shows that you care as a parent. If you haven't seen it, watch it. And I've watched it three, four times because I'm trying to retain the information and remember what my job is. And there's a lot of um, uh, there's coaching and parent um, opportunities of learning where you actually can use their um, his uh, his belief system to help you talk to your child and and do things, but. You need understanding what we're doing to our game, what we're doing to our kids, and it's important. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys on Monday.